What's up everybody, this is Chitana Lance here bringing you the, another deck discussion. Today we're going to be discussing Yosinju, a deck that I've been currently playtesting for quite some time now since basically their release. And, uh, well, uh, my personal interest in the deck and how I think that they might actually have a really good chance in the meta. Um, anyway, these, I'm not going to be discussing like super good text like side deck cards or anything like that so i'm just going to jump right into it so what is, what what are side frames basically basically all the all the all the main deck monsters aside from one is they're, they're hand traps they're all hand traps and they all have a clause that say basically that basically says if you, if you have no monsters you can summon these cards but you have to, but you have to have no monsters that's why you run cards that that bats them back. There is a Yosinju variant of this deck, and there is a and, and there is this variant, which is the one that I'm currently running, which is the one I feel like is the most successful. Um, but uh, also the deck thing, the, the deck is the, the deck's entire focus is to is to, um, fo is to center around this card, Scythe Frame Driver, which might seem like an inherent weakness because it, because it, you lose to cards like Prohibition. Um, Mind drain since they're all hand traps, all of that. So I know I, I'm I'm wary of the of, of the decks of, of the decks uh, capabilities and in the lack thereof. So <clears throat> I believe that, that that because of that it actually might make this deck seem really bad to a lot of people. But in my opinion, from if you if you play the right build, which is something that I've been trying to test for quite a while, something that I've been trying to do for for a few. For about for like a format now, <clears throat> so what cards make this make this deck really good? Well, first thing you run you run pot of duality because you don't summon a, you don't special summon on your turn hardly ever. Um, the only time that you do special summon is when your opponent attempts to stop your pot of dualities or attempts to stop your other cards. Um, but for the most part, you generally don't you generally don't stop you generally don't special summon on your opponent's turn. That's what that's also why you play a car card D and whatever because your your turn is entirely focused on your opponent. Um, it's a more it's more it's more interactive on your opponent's turn than it is on your own. And so you just set up Winder Rabbit, set a few cards, pass, and hopefully when, when your opponent eventually does something, you can have, have like a you have, you could special summon like an alpha or maybe a beta or even a gamma, and just search out like a circuit or a um, or an overload. So for the most part, the deck is actually really fun, really self-explanatory in that sense, and it's actually not that difficult to understand. However, the curve of this deck, I believe, is very very high. So if you feel like that, if you if you're more of an into a simpler deck and, and more simplistic decks like Satella Knights, I would say that they're a, a decently simple deck um, with their own good combos and their own strategies, but um, I believe that, that the learning curve for this deck is actually decently high. So you have because you because there are certain cards that you want to activate right right and now right, right immediately, but you probably shouldn't because there's other options that you probably should go for. So anyway, um, one of the bigger one of the biggest cards in the deck is actually um, Circuit. Circuit is a really really good card because it allows you it allows you to synchro summon on your opponent's turn. This is very crucial because because uh, cyframes cyframes generally die at the end of the turn if you don't use them. So if, since and since this deck is basically a, a active all the time on your opponent's turn, you're not going to have a chance to sing with someone on your own turn. So generally speaking, you want to you want to you want to uh, <coughs> have cyframes have cyframes circuit out before you actually do any do any of the effects. Though it's occasionally okay to 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 splurge on them a little bit. You again, you should probably run three of each copy. I'm also not running Epsilon. I should actually explain why. Um, I'm going to explain one after I'm done explaining Circuit and other cards. But <coughs> this card is really good because you want to um, have that capability of just essentially just making giant synchro monsters on your opponent's turn and having them basically do your dirty work for the Cyframes. You want to have cards like um, Black Rose Dragon, Zeta, um, even this, even Michael is actually really good. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, because you, if, once you make sevens, it's just really hard to get for them to get over. Um, and in the turns eight, there, there's there's a sort of Spark Dragon, Scrap Dragon, Cypher from Overlo uh, Omega, um, Scar Right, uh, Dragon Archfiend. These cards are really good because you, if, once you make them on your opponent's turn, it's really hard for the for your opponent to actually try to do anything about. Um, so. Another card that is really good is uh, Cyframe Circuit. Cyframe Circuit is, 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 or not Cyframe Circuit, Cyframe Overload, excuse me. But you know, the reason why that this deck is really, uh, this card is really good is because it, it, it gives you outs to most cards that you, and otherwise, that otherwise you wouldn't have anyway. So, for example, if you're playing against Cosmos, 
terrible example, I know. But if you're facing down a Cosmo Town and you don't want them to endlessly get value off that Cosmo Town, you can just banish it instead of just destroying it. Because it doesn't destroy it, it just simply outright banishes the card. On top of that, it has the ability to search out anything once it dies. And generally, it's, go it's probably going to die on your opponent's turn. It's never going to die on your turn hardly ever. And the times that it does, it really generally doesn't matter if you search or not anyway. So, because you already have other cards that, that can fluctuate and add cards to your hand, or you have other plays that you want to make anyway. Uh, other than overload, anyway. So, uh, other cards that you want to um, consider is is card card D. Card card D is a draw two cards and, and, it, and it just ends your turn. So basically, you just summon this card, pay, uh, activate card card D, draw two cards, end your turn. Then you you have a little bit more resources to work with, and, you, and you're only out of card card D, which isn't terrible. Um, Wonder Rabbit is another good card. This card allows you to make plays uh, uh, all, all, with Cypherms because you could just ban it, it and not even worry about it. Um, side frames have, have, have a very inherent link to, to having cards stuck on the board. The only thing that I had don't like about Wind Up Rabbit is when your opponent activates something, and, and you, but you can't, and once you chain Wind Up Rabbit, you can't respond to anything else afterwards, which is kind of unfortunate. But it's it's neither here nor there, so you might want to actually activate this on your opponent's draw phase, unless the, unless the situation is so dire that you can't come back from then you might not want to activate this card at all. But generally speaking, this card is really good because it massages your opponent to the point where you can have it to, to, to where your Synchro Monsters can finish them off or just take them down on their own. So, um, As I said, you want to run uh, Pot of Duality because you don't special summon at all and it just gives you cards deeper into your deck. So, yeah. Psyche Field Zone is actually a pretty strong card because it allows you to make uh, uh, other plays on your turn. Like I said, it's an entirely interactive on your opponent. The stick is interactive with your opponent. However, it's really good to have some plays on your turn. So Psychic Field Zone actually does cope with that a little bit. Um, you have to put basically it's basically you have to put two two second monsters that, that were banished, a tuner and a non-tuner, and special and synchro summon a, uh, a psychic uh, uh, a psychic type a synchro monster. It doesn't necessarily synchro summon a special summon, so it's crucial to know. Um, so you can you can synchro summon into like an Omega. Uh, Thought Ruler, Archfiend, Zeta, or even Psychic Life Transfer, which I'll go behind this card here in a minute because it's actually game changing for me. But um, anyway, you also want to run, run cards like Loose on Turn. People often get this confused and people think that this card is bad in, in the deck because it negates their effects on the field. So all the Cypher monsters activate and resolve in the hand. Or, well, they technically they resolve in the field, but the effects to destroy things and to end a battle phase and to, end, and to negate effects and to search all happen in the hand. So, what you do is you place your you, you don't I guess you don't really need to special summon them. Just you just show them to your opponent, search out your card, special summon them, and then go on, go on about your way. Um, that's what people often get confused about with lose a turn, is because it's very very uh, it, people think that 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 it in, that it negates their effects and that you just continue that your opponent just continues as they were, but that's not that's that's, that's not the case. Uh, Another card that's really good, that's coming out in Shining Victories, is Rippling Mirror Force. This card is actually really good because since you don't have monsters on your board hardly ever, Rippling Mirror Force is good because it prevents your opponent from OTKing you, and and and, and, and it kind of it kind of fills this void that oh that beta kind of did, that, that kind of didn't, um because you only have three outs to two OTK decks and they're all beta, so this card just gives you a much better, better chance of surviving, and it allows you to to do things so. Like that so um synchro synchro uh, um synchro monster uh um recommendations would probably be black rose i've run this card at two um, you can run it at one um, but having the ability to nuke your opponent on your opponent's turn it's pretty good <coughs> zeta or not zeta life transfer life transfer is actually really good because in because it sets up for cypher or psychic field zone and uh that's really good because it allows your opponent to no, it allows you for one to gain some of the, some of that life back that you previously lost because you are over almost a decade, or it just lets you open up for more plays. It's strictly almost almost always to open up your own plays. Uh, Cyframe Lord Zeta. Cyframe Lord Zeta is actually better than people actually think. Uh, some people actually run this card at one, and I don't understand why because this card is just one on one. It's basically one on one because it removes cards from the field, and it and it and it. And it, and it doesn't necessarily do anything after that. Flaring, obvious reasons. Uh, Michael, because Michael banishes cards. It's pretty good. Plus, it has the ability to sack your to send things to the graveyard, which is actually not terrible in this deck. So, 
Spark Dragon, kind of obvious. Not real large screen. Again, kind of obvious. Spark Dragon. Sometimes you just want to pop your own uh, own overload. It happens. So. Omega. This card is really good at two. That's why it's that's why it's played in Inferno. That's why it was played in Pepe for a while. Um, Hot Red Dragon Archery, mainly because it destroys everything. It's a board clear, so. And this card. Because it's good. Um, you also might want to invest in Fortune Tune or or uh, Zen Mains because two wind up rabbits does happen, and 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 these cards these cards are a really good way to, I guess, slow down the game state. So anyway, <coughs> other cards. Oh, Epsilon. The reason why I'm not running Epsilon. Let's bring it up real quick. So let's bring it up real quick. Is because. <laughs> And it gets traps, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. If it, if it weren't for the fact that traps aren't very big at the moment, that might change. And I might actually eat my words and might end up replay and might end up side decking this card. I mean, I already do, but what? Uh, so I, I might actually go into this card more often. However, I, at the current stage, it's not very, it's not very crucial. So that's another thing. Um, another card, other cards you might want to run is are. Defigure and Macrocosmos, because um, even if they get banished, it doesn't hurt you that bad. <laughs> and it, it's a it's a out to most decks anyway. So anyway, you tell, tell me what you guys think about the about the Cypher rooms in general. Um, I think that this deck is actually pretty fun. It might not be too good in the meta, but I think I think the deck is actually worth considering to pick up at least if you just want to have a little bit of a little bit of trickery. It's kind of a, a really really tricky deck. So anyway. Tell me what you guys think. Uh, if if you have suggestions for this deck, tell me what you think I should, I should add. Um, I'm also gonna actually before I go, um, Psychic Path. Uh, uh, Psychic Path is actually another card that you could probably run, but that's another, that's neither here nor there. And I'm gonna be signing out later, guys.